Hi, this is Becky Grumlick. Today we're going to learn three things. One is how to make something look round and have some shine on it. How to fix a background when you don't like what's there. And how to paint metallic looking areas without using metallic paint. I'm gonna go right over the flowers and get the shading into the cup. Now it's very light on this edge. You need to pay attention to how it changes colors as it goes. And over here, it actually gets a bit yellower and very light. just filling in quickly and then I'll, while it's still wet I'll add some of the shading. When I really want to get values right I use the, this tool especially when the nuances aren't real great and you, I, you want to check somewhere where there is no flower and see the cup is much much darker than what I've painted and it actually looks like a kind of drab ugly color but I need more of it just the same. Sometimes it seems impossible, impossibly dark, some of these colors that you end up having to use. And I've drawn everywhere where there was a lighter reflection, so right, right here. I turn my paper whenever it seems more comfortable to my hand, and then I turn my picture too, because it makes it easier to follow. turned it the wrong way though, so that's not easier to follow. Over at this side, there's almost no color. It's very watered down paint. And don't forget to dry your brush on your sponge so it's, it's less drippy. And I'm going out of my line some, and that's because I, I'm not too worried about, um, well. Okay, now this shadow, it actually goes like this. And it has these two lighter areas in it. Two shiny spots. This one disappears, and that one goes all the way to the edge of the cup. Saucer. Right here, there's a little shadow that's very dark. And that makes a big difference in the whole 3D thing. And keeps the cup from floating in the air. Last check on the cup. Now that it's dry, we'll be able to tell better. I'm still pretty light. A bit too light. Sometimes I can't believe it, even after years of experience painting, how dark you have to go for whites and lights and how wrong it looks when you put it on. Like, look at that. That just looks like I'm ruining this cup. I'm putting a little bit of shine in there and right here. Checking again down lower. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's see if I got it too dark up here. No, not really. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it if you'd like, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and watch out for my other videos. That's a kind of loud for this, so we're going to add some green. Green and purple kind of cancel each other out a little bit. I'm going to have some shadows, but I'll do them later. And then I want some bottles 
in the back and I think I'm going to just have these impressions of bottles. Some different colors maybe. And then these will have some shadows too that go the same direction as the cups. I'll have to go back and revisit those shadows. The background is part of the painting. It is important. And if you don't have any kind of ideas for it, then it's easy to just have a bunch of mush back there that distracts or to have something too bright or uh, too attention grabbing. Now, when you're doing the background and it goes across uh, behind something, you need it to be the same color on the other side. You don't, the background doesn't suddenly change from that color to say this color while it's behind a tree, a handle, or whatever. So that's something to be aware of when you're painting. I am definitely not in love with my background. I'm gonna do these purple flowers and hope that it brings this painting alive and the greens in them too. Flowers are not exactly evenly spaced on this. It looks like so it looks like the artist did a little bit of whatever they wanted. Now this I'm using uh, dioxazine purple with quinacridone magenta mixed in with. This is quite a spring green, so I've mixed some permanent green pale with my darker hookers. And I'll first start with this here to finish off. There's some rainbow colors in there, which is kind of fun. And so I'm gonna put those little bits of color in first. It's sort of, the cup is sort of pearl looking inside. So I just want a touch of pink. And then we also want the whole round thing happening. Part that makes it look curved, which okay. Now I'm getting into some of the colors that are in the front of the teacup, but I don't want to lose these rainbow things. Now I already lost some of the shines over here, but in the end I can uh, fix those with bleed-proof white. I don't usually. Uh, I don't really ever let a painting be ruined, thrown away ruined. I don't, I almost never throw away paintings because of something that didn't get exactly perfect. I usually find some way to salvage it. Hey, now I'm going to get the bleed proof white. I'm you need your brush to be completely clean because it's very hard to uncontaminate this if you get uh, white uh, colors into it. And this is a rescue method. It's better. If I had used Frisket, I wouldn't uh, probably be in this predicament. But it's better to fix paintings than to throw them away. Now, I know there's these rumors about not using white, and that is a, an outdated notion, and it's been outdated for quite some time. This summer, I had the privilege of stopping in at the Andrew Wyeth Museum 
And even though he is an artist from uh, previous times, he still used white. He didn't let a painting get destroyed because it didn't have white in it. This is a, a Kalinske Sable by Rhapsody, number eight. And even though it's number eight, you can probably see that that point is really good. I use this brush mostly for fine lines like this and for hair. Um, as far as other things go, I tend to not use it as much because it doesn't, um, the, the paint doesn't flow through it the same way. So if you're trying to fill in a bigger area, it just doesn't quite work as well. I'm drying off my brush so that I have less paint on there. And I'm just putting this uh, quite a few places, not everywhere. Because it'll a lot of it'll get covered. Okay, so right now I'm just getting some color on. The detail is what will make it look like it has shine. Okay, well let's put, get some of that detail in there. So we have a reddish brown here. Never mind, we're going to go over here and work on this part. Now, I'm going to get some of these browns in. The shapes matter. The shapes are part of the glow. So I've drawn in some very accurate shapes. This gets quite dark in here. So I'm using a teeny tiny brush for this. All right, now let's go rescue this handle. Or should I say finish? So I am going to um, get this back, this edge back here that I lost. Curves up here. And there's a pretty distinct line of shadow that comes across here. And shines up there. So it's all these little details. You, you do have to get kind of picky when you're working on when you're working on metal and reflections. Whoops, I'm up here.
So there's a lot of little lines I just added into there. So see, this is starting to have a certain shine to it. This is a Da Vinci 2 Casino um, hair. It's very soft, holds a lot of water, but it has a pretty good point. And I am going to attempt to rescue this background. I don't like it at all. Putting some serious blue into the shadow. Blue tends to make things recede. I'm just going to be doing some weird brush things to uh, change the type of background that it is. And not try to make it look like something is back there. Go around this all with a smaller brush. Oops. Let's take the tape off. So we accomplished a couple things. The cup does look round and the saucer looks round and this does look metallic. Now all of it could be worked on more and I, I still don't love my background, but I don't, um, I like my students to see how, how to work through some problems. And so that's kind of a bonus for this one that you got to see some problems worked through. 
Thank you so much for watching my video and happy painting.